In this demo, we'll showcase how you can create a load balancer in OpenStack. We're going to cover two types of load balancer, TCP, which takes a connection on a single TCP port and forwards it onto a number of backend instances, depending on the policy that you choose. We'll also cover web server load balancers. So first we'll create two VMs that both have SSH running and the Nginx web server so that we can show you a simple web page. So the first thing we'll do is create our instances. Here we'll create two instances called lbtest. We'll use a CentOS 8 template. We'll set the volume to delete on the instance delete as we don't want to keep these. We're going to use a small flavor and boot it on our private internal network. And we'll add a floating IP just a little bit later. We'll add our web server security group, which we'll show you more of uh, once we boot it. And here we can see the SSH key, and we're gonna set the nodes to auto configure. The script that we're adding simply loads the Nginx package and enables the start of the services automatically. So while that's loading, you'll have noticed that we used two security groups during that setup. The first is the default one. You can see we already have a rule here that opens port 22, and we'll use that to create our TCP load balancer. And for the web server security group, you'll see that we have access to port 80, and port 443 from the internal network. Now we can see our two instances have booted. So taking a look at the first one, if we check the logs, we can see it's just starting to install the Nginx. For the purposes of this demo, we're going to deliberately make the web pages look different. Um, this is obviously something that you would want to avoid in a production environment. So to do that, we first associate a floating IP address. Switching to our terminal, we'll just add our SSH key. And going back to check the logs, we can see that the boot process has now finished. So we should be able to log into our website. We're going to make a quick edit to the default index.html file, which you can find at this location. This will just clearly tell us which node is serving the web page. We'll just make a minor edit to the default HTML. We'll just change the heading of the web page here. So once we refresh the page, we should see the title change. Switching back to our terminal, we're just going to set up the host keys so that they are the same on both servers. 
and this will avoid any issues during the TCP test. Here we're going to copy the root key from one node to the other. We'll just move the keys to the same location and then restart SSH. You just need to grab the IP of the other instance. Now that the keys have been copied, we can restart SSH. Next, we're going to disassociate the floating IP from our test instance one, and we're going to build our load balancer. We'll give it a name. And in this case, we'll use the private network subnet. And next we create our listeners. This first one will be our HTTP listener. And I'm just going to rename the load balancer to HTTP as well for clarity. I'm going to leave all the default settings and change the algorithm to round robin. Here we'll create a pool for our instances. And now we add our pool members, which were the instances that we created earlier. We'll set the port to 80 and we'll keep the weights the same for now.
in the monitor settings. Um, this will tell us if any of our servers are down, which we will demonstrate shortly. The monitor will essentially check the return value is 200 when it hits the URL defined in this field. Ideally, you would replace this with your own status check HTML page, um, a page that would require minimal processing, but would also check any DB and API connections uh, to ensure that these are up. If they're not up, it would force a fail here and they let the load balancer know not to send any traffic to the broken node. And now we create our load balancer. I'm just going to briefly switch to an admin project to show you what's happening in the back end. When we refresh our admin project page, we should see some additional back end services that are now running. These get created in the load balancer network, which is not visible to the project user. So going back to our test project, we should see our load balancer is now online. So we'll assign it a floating IP. which is now no longer attached to our LB test one instance and now is attached to our load balancer instead. And we can confirm this by checking the web page. And we can confirm this by checking the web page and on continuous refresh, we can see that we are bouncing between the two servers just by looking at the title line. We can very easily adjust the weights in our load balancer configuration. So in this case, we'll give our second instance a higher weight of nine. Now going back to our browser, once we refresh, it should mean that nine times out of 10, we should see server two instead of server one. Now that we have demonstrated the HTTP load balancer option, we are going to demonstrate a TCP version. We'll delete our initial load balancer and create a new one. And we'll call this SSH LB. We'll use the TCP protocol. Along with port 22. For the pool, this time we'll use least connections algorithm. This is a better option for TCP as the connections can stay active a lot longer than HTTP would traditionally. A 
Again, we will add our pool members. Along with pore 22. And for the monitor, this will simply try to do a TCP connection. And if it fails, the monitor will flag it. Now we can see the operating status is online and after the provisioning status changes to pending update, it will then become active. Next, we'll try to SSH into our load balancer. And we can see that we have hit LB test one initially. If we connect again, we can see it's LB test test two. So now we're going to switch off the LB test two instance completely. And if we check in on our load balancer, we should see it start to fail some of the health checks. Now we can see that the operating status is degraded. Going back to our terminal and reconnecting, we will now always end up on LB test one. And if we go and bring LB test two back up online, And if we repeat the process, we can see that the load balancer will again switch between the two instances, LB test one and LB test two. If you would like to learn more about how different types of load balancers can be configured within LMX or indeed OpenStack, you can contact us via our website at www define-technology.com. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see our latest demo videos as soon as they are available. And thanks for watching.